Hi, hello, welcome and welcome back to at another episode on your favorite Little Slaw YouTube channel. So recently, I mean three days back on one of our video on the concurrency thread group, I have got a comment uh, telling that, man, this is very simple. You people explain clearly with multiple scripts, not transactions. Please learn and implement if you don't know. Yeah. So thanks again for your feedback. And uh, yes, I have uh, assumed that with just uh, running one uh, thread group, uh, that's with one concurrency thread group, it's going to be replicated multiple times, like with any number of uh, scripts. But still, since you have asked uh, to ask me to learn, yeah, I have learned it, and I will implement it now for you. I will show you how does uh, this uh, concurrency thread group works with multiple scripts and not transactions um, so i have not taken it personally i understand that this will benefit every one of our subscribers so that's the reason i have created a new video on this so this is going to be the day 16th or i think the the day the new day uh, the new video in this series and this will definitely benefit every one of our customers or subs subscribers and uh, uh, and again, thanks uh, everyone for supporting um, uh, these videos because I could see a lot of people are watching these videos and because this video is uh, a part of a video where we were uh, uh, seeing uh, how to do a testing right from the scratch uh, where we were collecting the requirements, uh, doing the workload modeling, uh, creating scripts, doing parameterization, doing correlation, and then running the test with different thread groups and then collecting the results and then sending the reports. So this is part of that video. So in fact, again, uh, I'm really sorry. I don't know your uh, exact name, but learn work MP3TX. Thanks for your question. And I'm preparing this video for every one of our subscribers. And for that, uh, I'll open the JMeter. So here I have, this is the same uh, script which I've used uh, for the previous demo. And I will show you what did I do here, what, what was the change I did. And I will tell you uh, how to do this concurrency thread group with multiple scripts. And before we move on to this video, this is me, Austin Shanmugam. I welcome you all to our little slide YouTube channel. Please, please don't forget to subscribe to our channel if you haven't subscribed yet. Subscribe to it, add, like the video, uh, share the video with your friends, and uh, uh, tell about your friend, tell to your friends about our channel if they are working on performance testing, or if they are part of a DevOps team, or if they want to learn Git, GitHub, Azure, Cloud, anything, Terraform code. Just let let them know that there's a channel called Little's YouTube channel, and I'm teaching it. And if you have any questions or feedbacks, please do uh, comment. Whether it's a good feedback or a bad feedback, please. Uh, do comment in the comment section. I'll go through it and I'll uh, improve myself. And in fact, I have even um, uh, come up with a new mic microphone because many of you have complained that there is no proper audio. The audio is not uh, is not full quality or the audio is very low. And uh, so I'm making changes. I'm uh, making changes very slowly. Uh, but every time I, I do make some changes, so okay, let's. I don't want to bore you, so let me go to the video. So what did I do is I have got four different thread groups. I mean, like both all, all of them are like concurrency thread groups, but I have made one change here. Like the scripts are same. I have added a think time, uh, so a think time for all these scripts, and I have added a summary report for each and every um, uh, script so that I can show you how does it work and how do we achieve the throughput. And if you see, we have got four uh, different uh, thread groups. And uh, I, I mean, I'm trying to achieve different uh, TPS. Like for the first script, the first thread group I have got, uh, okay, let me make it to 10. And then the second one, okay, let me make this one to 10, okay. And then uh, the second thread group has got five, and then the third one has got 20, and the fourth one has got 30. But one thing here we have to note down is like I have added a ramp up time of one minute, which is like all the users will be ramp up, ramped up in the very first minute. And then it's just um, a one step count. So everybody will be ramped up in the same time and then it will run for two minutes, which is like the steady state. So totally this test will run for three minutes. If you see, uh, we have got uh, to run this test for three uh, full uh, complete minutes. And uh, same is the case for all the third groups, uh, but the target concurrency is like quite different, but the thread, uh, the duration of the test is going to be same, which is like for three minutes. 
because I, I just want to show you how does it work and I do not want you people to wait for a long time. So that's the reason I have just uh, shredded the uh, runtime, but we are going to achieve what we expected here. And apart from that, I have not made any other changes. It's just going to be the same concurrency thread group across all the, um, for all the scripts and everything is going to be same. So let's, let me start the test here and we'll meet at the end of the test and I'll show you what did we achieved and uh, before that, I'll show you one more thing. So we have got 10 plus 5, 15, and another 20, which is 35, and then another 30 at the last. So we have got 65 users. So we have got 65 threads running out of total 66. And okay, so let me, I'll just show you at the end of the test what happened and how many uh, throughput we achieved and how many iterations we have achieved. So just wait for a few more seconds to see the results of this test. So now the test has successfully completed and let me take you through the summary report. So here, um, if you see on the top, uh, let me just uh, filter the, yeah. So these are the transactions which we wanted to watch. And at the top, if you see, we have got three iterations because that's what we expected. And we have got 10 uh, target concurrency, which is like 10 throughput per user. And we were able to achieve for the first few transactions and before the end of the other transactions to get executed, automatically the test has been exited. So that's the reason. We were able to see the first few transactions as executed three iterations as we expected. And if you, as you see here, uh, we were able to achieve like almost 12 uh, transactions for all these three iterations, which is like almost, we were able to achieve what we expected. So which is like 10, and this is like almost like 20% of uh, response time, which is like quite higher. And if we were able to achieve a long, a lengthy test, then at that point of time, we will be able to achieve the exact number, which is like almost like if we wanted to achieve like 10, uh, target concurrency, we will be achieving like almost um, 10.2 uh, or 10.3. And if you see, uh, since we were able to achieve only two, that's the reason the throughput shows a little bit higher. But if we were able to achieve three, automatically the throughput will be ex almost exactly what we want to achieve. So that is for the very first concurrency third group, which is like for the 10 uh, target concurrency. And then when we move on to the second one, which is like for the five, and then it's just almost same here. So if you see for the very first few transactions, it's like three iterations for these and then two iterations for the rest of the transactions. And the same here uh, in the throughput as well, like we were able to achieve close to what we wanted to achieve, like five, which is like here six. And uh, all these are for the uh, three iteration transactions. And for the two iteration transactions, it's quite high because we were not able to achieve the exact expected one. And like I said, if we were able to achieve a run a long, a lengthier test, then the throughput will be almost same, uh, will be almost similar to what we wanted to achieve. And moving on to the third concurrency third group, we wanted to achieve 20. And moving to the samples, we were able to run for almost most of the transactions like uh, three iterations and for the few uh, last it's like two iterations and the same is the case here we want to achieve 20 and uh, we have achieved like almost like 25 this is again the 20 percent of increase uh, when compared to the total uh, throughput and the same is the case with the last one which is like we wanted to achieve 30 for the first few like i said we were able to achieve three iterations uh, for these transactions and uh, two iterations for the last two and the throughput part, yes, it's the same thing here. Uh, let me just create it here. So these are the one we wanted to see, observe. And here, if you see, they were like, like I told you, it's like almost 20% of difference. And this will come down. This will gradually come down when you when you run the test for a long time. And like for the first few transactions, it's like close to 30 and like 20% higher. And for the last few, it's like, uh, more because of the number of iterations, which is like just two, two iterations. So that's the reason. So this is how the concurrency thread group works. So if you have the number, like the number of transactions which you wanted to achieve, for example, like uh, let me take an example here. Like if you want to achieve uh, 600 hits, you are able to achieve using this because with 10 uh, hits, with 10 hits per minute, and uh, which is running for 60 minutes, which is like 60 minutes multiplied by 10 hits per minute, which is like you'll be able to achieve 60, uh, 600 hits per minute. So this is exactly what we wanted to achieve. So if you have the number of hits in your hands, 
you can easily use this concurrency thread group and this will definitely help you to achieve what you wanted to achieve like for example like take it like for 60 minutes and you will be able to achieve 600 hits because you are achieve, you are hitting like you are getting 10 hits per minute like if you see here like for the throughput part you are able to achieve like 12.5 per minutes and when you are running it for a long lengthier time you will be able to achieve like almost 10.1 or 10 uh, 0.2 10.3 but still you are able to achieve uh, the number of samples here like it's, it's almost like 600 samples per hour so i think i have explained it uh, to you very well i have i was able to uh, learn it and i was able to implement it with multiple scripts and not transactions and i believe this video would be very helpful to you so until i meet you in another interesting video it's bye bye from us and and your favorite little saw youtube channel please don't forget to subscribe to our channel like and share the video with your friends bye bye